Um, the, the, the analysis uh, is here, coverage network analysis, and then you go to RSRP, and you've got here the servers, which is first server, second server. This is a redundancy analysis, and that's uh, uh, overlap analysis and so on. So let me go back to the presentation. Like I said before, the tool has a GIS dimension, and it's gonna make your life a lot easier. You don't have to have someone who is experienced or, or, or specialized in GIS to solve your problem, to do some basic math. So let me show you how we deal with that with the outdoor coverage. We usually carriers or operators are interested in outdoor coverage at the main, at the main criteria. So um, outdoor means road. So uh, people on the road, on the streets and so on. So we can import this information, the GIS information into the software. And you can see here on the left-hand side, I have highways, motorways and so on. And you can have points, oil lines, polygons and so on. So however, these roads are coming as a center line of the road. But if you want to be more, more precise, uh, you need to buffer, buffer the road, buffer it in each direction. And, and then you have a kind of a, a polygon now. So it gives you a better estimate. Now in the software, we have a function called filter. We've got map filter, general filter, and that general filter has the, the capacity to check vector line limited. So you can limit your analysis, your statistical analysis to the vector line only. And you can put a buffer. So here you have a buffer 2.5 meter each side each side of the road. And, and that's what means, that means you're gonna analyze area, not a line anymore. So let me show you an example here. So you see, this is a two, center, two road center lines. So what we need to do, we need to do this. We need to, we need to flat, flatten it, okay? I'm not talking about flattening the curve, okay? We just need to flat this, uh, this uh, center line of the road in order to have more pixels, to have more samples along the road. So let me show you how this is done in the software. So in the software, you display your RSRP. You have your vectors on the map. This is your RSRP. So I'm gonna apply filter on RSRP. And then I'm going to add the, uh, the roads and, 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 and the streets and the uh, highways. And then you go map, filter, general filter. And then uh, use the general filter, check the vector line limited and check the distance that you wanna, you wanna use. Put uh, the range, the RSRP range in DBM say from neg 109 dbm to neg 30 dbm range compute and that's it you got the results okay so you can see here and now we have 68 percent 68 percent of the roads in, in 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 that map are actually enjoying neg 100 dbm or better rsrp neg 100 dbm or better so that's that's what it means and when you apply the filter that's what the that's what the software is doing the software is cutting the coverage uh, uh, along along the, the road line, uh, along, uh, along the vector line or, or the center line of the road with, with a buffer, with a buffer of say two and a half or three meters. So uh, smart antenna, in the software guys today, um, in the software you see here we have, um, when, you, when you want to model MIMO, uh, massive MIMO beam forming, whatever, uh, um, you see in the software today we have capacity to, to model the layers and model the, the number of arrays and the multi-user, how many users, concurrent users, that, that's a massive MIMO. So you can, you can model how many users, concurrent users, how many spatial layers, and how many arrays. So arrays, you can, we're talking about these arrays, okay? So you see this, this uh, tr traditional antenna, you've got here only uh, one array, you can only make one beam. You've got two arrays, you can make four beams, and that's uh, 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 an array, you can, make, you can make even more beams. More beams means more, uh, uh, um, more directional, more narrower, narrower beam. The beam will be narrower and will be a higher gain. I will give you better performance overall. It also means you can handle more spatial layers, you can, have, you can handle more uh, uh, multi-users, you can handle more multi-users. There's a lot of advantage in this. So you can see here in the software now, we can have a, a station or cell-specific MIMO configuration. Cell-specific MIMO configuration. And then you can, you can, decide, you can decide on how many layers. Um, don't mix uh, uh, arrays, arrays with the antenna configuration 64 by 64 or 32 by 32. So 64 by 64 has uh, up to eight arrays, up to eight arrays. 32 by 32 has up to four arrays, okay? You need to put the right numbers here. And this information you usually get from the vendor, from the equipment. So layers are the number of spatial layers, and then you've got how many concurrent users you want to serve. That's where you set up the information. So, uh, uh, after that, uh, you can, uh, once you have the, the configuration in every station, uh, you can do a, a, a throughput analysis, okay? So you see here, we introduced, uh, uh, this has been here for a long time ago, uh, the throughput map. 
and, and then we have, we have here different MIMO configuration, AAS, adaptive antenna scheme. Uh, adaptive antenna system, we have spatial multiplexing, which means you're going to activate multiple layers. Uh, and here we have uh, multi-user MIMO, you're going to activate multiple user. Here we have transmission diversity, you're going to use multiple antennas to, to provide diversity. Um, and then here we have the traditional on the end. So you can, you can configure it in the software to operate in MIMO fashion or, or non-MIMO fashion, and what type of MIMO you want to operate it on. And here we have the throughput. So you can, you can, you can uh, map the signal to noise ratio into throughput automatically, but by, by the use of the Shannon, Shannon theory, Shannon bound, uh, corrected Shannon bound, I should say. So here you can, you can define this as auto, and auto means uh, it's going to use ind individual parameters you have in the site. If you, if you dictate it to two, for example, so you're going to use two spatial layers everywhere. So it's going to double the throughput effectively. So massive MIMO configuration. Um, traffic channels, you can do beamforming traffic channels, you can do transmission diversity, you can do spatial multiplexing, and you can do uh, user multiplexing. We'll quickly show you uh, what happens when you use one layer and two layers and three layers. This is one layer only here, one layer. I'm using a, a 5G configuration. So you see maximum I'm, I'm getting is 134.8 meg. So when you use two layers, I'm getting 269. So I'm scaling the entire network. That's why the coverage is not changing much because I'm scaling everything equally. So two layers I'm getting 269 meg, 269 meg. With four layers I'm getting 539 meg. Okay, so this is where 5G is very, very um, uh, powerful, is the, num the number of spatial, spatial layers you can, you can multiplex on, on, the same, on the same channel. The software also does support multi-carrier aggregation, which is uh, uh, combining maybe 4G and 5G, or 5G and 5G, or 4G and 4G. So the idea is to uh, uh, connect uh, different bands or different, uh, sub, uh, or different uh, channels from the same band, uh, and then uh, work together in, a, in an aggregated fashion. So uh, multi-carrier aggregation is based on master-slave relationship. So it is supported in the software. You need to uh, specify the master as a pilot. So the main station, which is doing the control, need to be a pilot. And then all the rest of the cells who's going to be aggregated together with the master need to be on the same group. So, so the master-slave relationship must be existing by checking the pilot. And you need to follow the same group. You need to be the same group. And, and, and once this is done, in the software, you can run multi-carrier aggregation. And probably multi-carrier aggregation I might have showed it to you before. It's here, carrier aggregation in the throughput. So when you, when you check this box, the software will look at the master and slave relationship between the sites. Um, so uh, this is, this is uh, no carrier aggregation, no carrier aggregation. You can see the coverage uh, at the edge. The edge is a bit weak at the edge, the throughput. This is a throughput map. So throughput map here, you're getting green, red, green, red, green, red in these areas. And, uh, and you can see the green is at the lower end of the throughput. Now, once I run the simulation with multi-carrier aggregation, with multi-carrier aggregation, so I'll show you what happens. So the software only show you what you need to see, okay? It doesn't show you everything. I only show you the master, the master cell. So the rest of the cells are just auxiliary, auxiliary in that case to the master cell. So if the master cell has a coverage, then, then we overlap the coverage with the, with the serving cells and then we add the, the, the throughput. Now look, this is a green. This is now red and yellow. So you've got now more throughput at the edge. At the edge of the, of the master side, you've got, you've got more auxiliary uh, throughput because of the, the multi-carrier aggregation happening between the adjacent cells and the cell. So this is multi-carrier aggregation and it can be done and managed in the software without any problem. So, Neighbor planning uh, is, is also supported in the software. So the, the, the neighbor planning is based on the, on the handover su uh, surface or the handover uh, map concept. So you can see these pink areas here are actually called the handover surface. Handover surface is defined as, as uh, the buff signals, A and B, must be above threshold. And uh, if you take the, the, the difference of these two, the two signals, the absolute difference is above 5 dB. This is, this is the area exactly, the pink. Now, the more pink you have, the more likely this is a good neighbor, okay? So, so in the software, you can, you can define uh, what is the, 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 the handover target, the handover margin. You can define the, the RSRP, and you can define the surface, how much pink you want to have, how much handover area you need to have to be satisfied as a good neighbor. So you can see here, this is a bad neighbor. These two sites are, this, are far away, and this is 5G, both of them. And you can see not much pink between them. Uh, they're not a good neighbor at all. 
So the, the software will not uh, create neighborless for these two. This is an example of a good neighbor. So then, then, then the software will pick these two as a, as a good potential neighbors for handover. So this is where you, in the software you can calculate handover uh, and neighbor calculations. And uh, um, you can define the parameters and then the software will calculate for you, for every cell, who is the neighbor. So for every cell, you will know what is the neighbor list. And you can see here, this is station, cell number 778 has one, two, three, four neighbors, for example. And it become part of the, the station parameters as well. If you go to the station tab, the, the GNOB tab in the, in the base station, you can see the neighbor list here and you can see who they are. So um, the coverage that you produce, you can, you can, you can um, uh, publish it online. So this engine allows you to export from HTZ uh, a coverage or, or, uh, or other parameters like vectors or uh, um, uh, RSRP analysis, as I say, no, whatever. Whatever analysis you produce, you can, you can dump it into a cloud server and the cloud server will take care and then pass it to, to WMS server and publish it online, okay? So this design has a, has a load balancing capabilities and uh, it's, it's secure. So let me show you how, how it works. So I'm gonna log in. So I've got a Singapore account, um, log in. So here you go, this is map of Singapore. And, and then you see I have in this project, you have one, two, three, four, four layers. I can activate the RSRP, here we go. You see, it's very fast. And you can publish the coverage in different colors, one color or two colors or no colors. Uh, you've got flexibility how you, how you want to export this. It works in the same way that Google, Google map works. Um, you can zoom, uh, the more you zoom in, the, the better the quality. You've got satellite view or you've got map view, so you can do RSRP. So you see, initially you have a low quality, and then when you zoom in, you have better quality. And it's very fast, very, very responsive. And uh, I have on the left RSRP, I have uh, server coverage. That's the server coverage, which is the, the normal server coverage. You can see this is bigger and also fast. And I also have the, the sites. I can put the sites on. Then I have the roads. So all the GS data you have, you can publish it online in, in, in any order and you can put any layers you want. You can have a public uh, uh, link or you can have a private link. So um, you can also inquire guys about this service if you need anything. So you can put address here. For example, if you want to search for an address, you can search for an address, it has autocomplete, and then it will take you there. And then you can display maybe the coverage in that spot. This is the spot. You see there's no coverage in that spot. All right, so this is guys um, 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 pretty much what we wanted to um, talk about. All right, thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, please do contact us. And we're more than happy to, to follow up with you today. So um, thank you for, for, for tuning in and then we look forward for the next session.